कुछ मार के जी Hi guys, good evening. Shall we start? Yes, sir. Oh. 
few messages. I'm getting few messages. Guys, can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's visible. Yes, sir. Today, uh, guys, we will start with basically like um, the basic switching, the basic switching uh, flow, right? Or we can say the basic function of the switching, right? Whenever we like uh, connect a switch in the network, right? So how it works and uh, what, what are the basic we have, right? So initially, we'll start with the basic functions. Okay, so and guys, uh, how we will take the doubts because we can see, I can see uh, like 88 participants here, right? So, uh, once let's say, um, we will have a topic discussion initially, right? And then we'll see, like, uh, if that is done, then we can take the doubts one by one, right? So, we'll take all the doubts definitely, right? So, if we are 86, 87, 88, that doesn't matter, right? So, we'll take every single doubt and we'll try to explain everything in the given time. Okay, and guys, we will try to have the session of around one, one and a half hour or it might be two hours. Depend the topics, what topics we are doing. Okay, so on the same topic, uh, we will have might be one and a half hour or might be two hours. Okay, and guys, for the recordings, like this is a live session only, right? Can't provide the recordings to everyone. Okay, so you can just join the class and you can just leverage the, this benefit. Okay. And uh, rest uh, is fine. Yeah, if you guys have any, have any like further questions or anything, any prior question before starting anything, you can ask anyone. Hello, sir. Good evening. Oh, good evening, Pindu. Yeah, <laughs> so thank you, sir, for this session. Actually, there is no query as of now. Okay. And we are also know you are a good trainer and the session will be, I think is more interested for us. Bindu, you are taking my, I think Palo Alto session, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hi, Bindu. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Awesome. Um, slides, guys, uh, we don't have the slides, right? What I do, I always just use a, this paint file, right? So I, I can share this paint file to everyone, whatever we'll discuss, right? So I can share this paint file to everyone. Okay. Okay, okay. Yeah, that I can share. Yeah. Any further guys? Sir, it will be a slides for us. Uh, for guys, you as whatever, well. Slides, I do not have any slides, right? Because this these are customized topics, right? So I will try to share this um notepad file, this one, right? Whatever I'm using here. Okay. One note. And no, I it will be difficult for you, sir. I mean this. So this Okay. Uh, any other questions, guys? Then we can start if you don't have any questions. Hello, Neeraj. What are the topics you will cover today? Uh, uh, today, we, we are starting from switch functions. Okay. And we'll do the basic switching mechanism, how the packet flows in the switch network, right? So the very basic things we'll discuss today. Okay. And the complete topic yeah. I've shared to everyone on the email, right? That you can go through. Okay, Neeraj. Thank you. Uh, Hi, Neeraj. Uh, yeah. Um, are you taking Palo Alto classes as well? Uh, was saying yes. Uh, but, but if you have any, if you have any other uh, technical query, you can uh, connect with me later, right? One to one. Let's start the session. Okay. If you don't have any. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think we can start, right? So, yeah. So, uh, whenever, let's say, if I'll just talk about a switch. Right. Uh, guys, just mute, right? Okay. So, a switch function. So basically on the switch, we have three functions. Whenever, let's say I'll plug a device, I'll use a switch in the network, right? So we have three functions. What are the basic, very basic three functions? The very first one is your Mac address learning. Okay. The second one we have is forward filter decision. Guys, can you... I think you have an option to mute all low prevention. Yeah. 
Just a minute. Okay. So basically a switch has three functions. Okay. Mac address learning, forward filter decision, right? And then loop prevention. So we will discuss one by one. What are these things, right? And whenever a switch gets a packet, what are the, what are the basic functions it does in the background? So the very first thing I'm putting here is Mac address learning. It means if I'll do a comparison with the router, right? Whenever a router gets a packet, initially it will verify the destination Mac address, right? Let's assume I do have a router, right? And that is getting a packet on this interface. So what will happen at that time, basically, whenever it will receive the packet over here, right? It will say, what is the destination Mac address, right? Because it has to do the layer three forwarding, right? But when we talk about a switch, what is a switch? Switch works at the layer two, right? And switches never change. They never change any header, or we can say any, um, any information inside the packet, right? But that is just reverse in the routing, right? Let's say I'll talk about a router. Router is getting a packet on the interface that will initially verify the destination MAC address. If that belongs to this router, it will receive it. Otherwise it will discard it. But what the switch does in the background, let's say we have a brand new switch, right? And I have connected a user here. Okay. I have connected another user here. Now we are assuming this switch is getting a packet. We'll discuss like before even getting the packet, what will happen at the time, right? Let's say this switch is getting a packet, right? And that has some source address, some destination address, right? So whenever the switch will get a packet, right? It will never verify a destination Mac. No, never, right? It will verify what is the source address. Okay. So switch will say, okay, I'm getting a packet. Let's say this has Mac address A. It will say, I'm getting a packet on the port number one with a VLAN ID one now what is vlan id if you don't know no worries right so we will discuss later in future like we'll discuss what, about the vlans what are the vlans what, what we use as of now you can understand all the ports of a switch are the part of a single vlan that is vlan one vlan is your virtual lan in the future we'll discuss everything about the vlan okay and the mac address is a let's assume the source mac is a right and then it is basically what it is doing here it is trying to maintain the Mac address table. It is trying to maintain the Mac address table, right? So whenever a switch gets a packet, right? So it will verify what is the source Mac address of the packet, right? And then it will maintain the Mac address table. And then further it can verify or it will verify destination Mac address. Okay. So the very first information we have is Mac address learning. Now the question here is, why the switch is doing that task? Why the switch is not checking directly a destination MAC address and doing the forwarding just like a router does, right? Router gets the packet, check the destination. If that is for me, I will get the packet. Then I will check a destination IP address to root the packet, right? Why the switch is learning the MAC address on the interface? That's a question basically, right? So why we have this function? Why the switch initially is learning the MAC address, right? What is the mechanism behind this, right? So guys, what happens actually? If I talk about a router, Let's say we have a router. Okay. Now, whenever router will do the forwarding that do the forwarding on the behalf of the routing table, right? But whenever we talk about, a, okay. And how the routing table builds, we have few protocols. We have few protocols. Those are used to build the routing table. So we can say we have the static routing. We can say we have the RIP protocol. We have OSPF. We have EAGRP and we have a few more protocols to build the routing table basically, right? But when we talk about a switch, switch do a forwarding on the behalf of MAC address table. Okay. And it does not have any kind of protocol to build that MAC address table, right? Because switches do not use any kind of protocols to get the MAC address of the user, right? They do not have any information like that, right? It means like one of the switch will advertise the information and the other switch will might be getting right. So we don't have that kind of concept here, right? That we have only in the case of router, right? So what switches says, switches says, as we don't have any protocol. So what we will do, what we will be doing whenever we get any request, let's say we have a switch here and a switch is getting a request. The switch knows. In future, whenever I will get a reply, I have to check the destination at that time, right? It means whatever source we have and whatever destination we have, right? In the reverse packet, that will be just a reverse, right? It means at that time, the source will be D 
and destination will be A. So at that time, I have to verify destination. So to verify destination, I will do one thing. Initially, within the packet, I will learn the MAC address and then I will verify the destination. So whenever I will get the reply back to me, I will be having idea where to reply. Okay. So this was the logic behind why switch is learning the MAC address or we can say source MAC address initially, even before checking the destination, because of, if the switch will verify the destination, it might do the forwarding, then it will not check the source MAC address, right? But initially the, so the switch is checking the source MAC address and will try to build the MAC address table, right? And then whenever it will get the packet reverse, right? It can verify. Oh, okay, fine. That is on the port number one, just do the unicast packet to the neighbor, right? So I'll start again this one. I'll try to explain one more time, right? Switch has three functions. The very first function we have is source, or we can say Mac address learning, right? So what is the very first function we have is Mac address learning, right? Now we have second function, third function. I'm just starting with the Mac address learning, right? We have a switch. I do have a user here. I do have another user here. Okay. That's a port number one. That's a port number two. We have a user A, we have a user B. That's a Mac address of the user, right? Now, as we know, again, I'm trying to explain the same thing again. We have a router R1. Okay. And whenever a router gets a packet that will verify, we know that will verify a destination Mac address, or we can say a destination IP address to do the forwarding. And why the router is checking directly destination because they have the protocols, they have the protocols to build the routing table and to maintain those things, right? But a switch does not have any kind of mechanism, or we can say the switches do not use any protocol to build the routing table, right? So guys, if you have any questions, you can ask. Okay. You have been doing any questions from your side? Yes, sir. I have a question. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sir, uh, first of all, sorry to interrupt you. Actually, sir, we all of know that a uh, switch is an intelligent device uh, mm -hmm. better than a hub or <coughs> bridge. So, mm -hmm. sir, what is the main difference mean uh, hub or a switch? That's a switch can uh, generate MAC address uh, table and uh, learning the MAC address. Actually, okay. which uh, particular feature uh, in the switch which helps to generate the MAC address table? Okay. Okay. Bindu. So I'll take this question later. Right. So the, the question here is, uh, the difference between hub and switch, right? What makes that device as a switch? What makes the device as a hub? I'll take this question later. Okay. Let me try to explain this part. Okay. First. Yeah. Okay. Now, so, uh, in the case of router, we know we have the protocols to build the routing table and they, they are very smart. That is fine. In the case of switching, we don't have the protocols to build the routing table. So sorry to build the Mac at the table, right? It means they do not use or the PC do not use with the switches, any kind of protocol to build that Mac address table. So they can, they can maintain something. No, what they do then let's say it is getting a packet here with the source Mac address a with the destination B, right? So switch knows whenever I will get a reply, that's a request, right? Whenever I will get a reply in the case of reply, right? This will be a reverse at that time, right? It means B will be a source and destination will be a. So at that time I have to verify where it is, right? So just to verify that part or just to do the forwarding for that part, the switch is learning the source Mac address initially, right? So the very first task, what they are doing here is they are learning the source Mac address. And this is the mechanism. They actually build the Mac address table, right? It is clear guys. So the very first function, it should be clear to everyone actually. Address. Okay, cool. Now the second thing. Okay. Before moving to the second thing, right? Let me explain a few more things here. Let's assume we have a switch here. Okay. I'm having a user here. Now I'm taking a very fresh diagram, right? Let's say, um, okay. This interface is one, this interface is two. Okay. The Mac address of the user is a, the Mac address of this user is B. Okay. And in this condition, let's assume what I will do. I will just bring the switch up. I will bring these devices up, right? And then I will basically configure IP address, right? Here also I will configure IP address, right? 
Now, in that case, what will happen here, whenever we configure the very first thing for the user even, right? The very first thing, whenever I will configure IP address, the user itself will try to verify a duplicacy, right? It will verify in this domain. Do we have any duplicate address over here or not, right? So what it will do, it will initiate or it will trigger a packet that is called as GR. It will trigger this packet, right? What it will contain, it will contain your information in the GR. It will say, let's say I'm trying to configure here 10.0.0.1. It will say, what is the sender IP address? Sender IP address is 10.1. What is the sender MAC address? That is MAC address is A. It is trying to verify duplicacy. So in the target MAC, target IP address, it will put the same IP address 10.1 and target MAC it will put all F because I want to, because this user want to send the packet out to all the users that are connected to this switch, right? So at that time, basically in the GR packet, it will put source IP, its own IP address, source Mac, its own Mac address, destination IP, a target IP address will be 10.0.0.1. And then target Mac would be all F. It means all of the switches, all of the users should receive the packet, right? And then they can take the decision. Now, that was a GR header. This was only the GR header, GR. And then it will add the MAC address or we can say layer two frame. It will add. Now source MAC address, it is A. Destination MAC address, it is all F, right? And then it will broadcast the packet. Now we have two things here. One is your GR header and one is your layer two frame. Now who is going to verify layer two frame? Who is going to verify the GR header, right? So all the... Transit switches, whatever switches we have in between, right? They will just verify your layer two frame. Only this one to do the forwarding. It, it means whenever this switch will get the packet, that will say, oh, fine. First of all, I'll be learning A in the source MAC address, right? The port number one is having MAC address A with some VLAN, right? Then it will say, oh, that's a all F. It has a broadcast, right? I have to send the packet out over here. It means the switch, the switch will just verify the layer two frame. That's it. They will never verify any other things, nothing, right? Once the device will receive the packet, the device will say, what is the destination MAC address? That is all of yes, I can receive it because that's a universal uh, MAC address, right? Then it will remove the layer two information, right? It will verify, okay, what is target IP? Do I have this IP? No, I don't have this IP. So it will drop the packet. But if this device will have the same IP address, it will give reply to this user. Otherwise it will drop the packet. So initially the users use GR packet to verify the duplicacy. Okay. So this packet is generally used to verify the duplicacy. Okay. And in which case, like the user will be sending in any case, whenever a device gets the IP address statically via dynamic way, like your DHCP. Okay. Via let's say triple POE via let's say IPCP. Why any method, whenever any of the device comes active with IP address, right? That basically originate a GR packet to verify the duplicacy. Okay. So that was the very first packet. Now let's assume they have verified everything. Now this has 10 0 2 and they have done this mechanism. So the very first mechanism was on the behalf of a user that was a GR. That is fine. Now it has a MAC address table. So switch has port number one is having MAC address A, port number two is having MAC address B. Fine. A switch learn the MAC address table or can maintain the MAC address table for next only 300 seconds. If these users will not do any kind of communication, right? What they will do, they will basically. Uh, uh, sir, I got a bit confusion here. Yeah. Can I mm -hmm. to explain? So, uh, going back to the GR uh, header. Mm -hmm. The sender IP we have mentioned will be same and the target IP will be same. Yes. And the sender MAC address will be, A? suppose, whatever MAC address. For which we are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, here we are trying to, in the the target MAC address, we are actually trying to get that, right? Uh, the, no, this is GR. It, I want will, to it, will it be FFF? Yes. No, look here. First of all, uh, we should know what is the logic here. The logic here is this user want to verify the connectivity or want to verify in this domain. Do I have the same user with same IP address or not? Right. Let's say in this class, yes. in this class, I want to verify in this session. I want to verify someone is having the same name, same name Neeraj or not. So what I will try to do 
at the layer two, I will try to ex I will try to reach to everyone first of all, right? It means I'm doing a broadcast at layer two, and at the layer three, I will pronounce my name N W E R A J. Someone is having this name or not? So if you will be having, you will give reply. So in the G R P, this is the mechanism. It means sender will be my IP address. Sender Mac will be my Mac address. Okay, target will be my own my IP address. Reason being, I want to verify someone is having the same name or not, right? And the target Mac will be okay. because I want to send the packet out to everyone. Everyone should receive it and verify they have the same IP or not, right? Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, got it. Okay. Hi, sir. Yes. Sir, GR uh, will check the duplicacy in a LAN segment only, right? Only LAN, yes, exactly. LAN segment, correct. In a single LAN segment, single broadcast domain. Suppose sir, there is two sites, two different sites. Mm -hmm. So if the IP is uh, same in two different sites, so there is no issue. Uh, IP duplicacy. Yeah, that depends. Okay, so the, uh, that kind of what kind of method we are using. Right? That depends on network, but so like that, we have two different network and we have the same IP, so that is fine. We can have okay. Okay, now so this was the very first mechanism where I want to verify the duplicacy. Let's say now the duplicacy has done right. We don't have any duplicacy here. Okay, uh, okay. I got a question. Just one minute. How, how it is possible for a switch to learn the MAC address of PC two if it is okay? Yeah. So uh, okay. Uh, what I, I was explaining here, I was trying to explain whenever I will configure the IP address over here, this will send the GR packet even, right? So whenever this user will send a GR packet, it will learn the MAC address of the user, right? Right, Salim? Okay, now, next question. Okay, sir. Now, okay, so this we have done about the very first mechanism that is GR mechanism right now. I'm taking the same topology again. Okay, now I'll discuss the second thing. Port number one, port number two. Uh, this MAC address is A, this MAC address is B, and uh, this has, let's say, IP address 10.0.0.1. This has IP address 10.0.0.1. Okay, and uh, And what we have, fine. Let's see. Okay, uh, I told you one thing here. Whenever a switch maintains the information, that maintains only for next 300 seconds. Only for 300 seconds, right? Uh, Sayed, what is your question? The main problem is about this. Um, okay, I did not get your question, but it is. Okay, now. Whenever we talk about a switch, right, it is basically it will maintain the MAC address table only for next 300 seconds. That is right. It means whenever, let's say, these users are doing a communication, that is fine. It means this switch will be having the entries fine. But if this switch, if these users will do the communication after, let's say, um, after five minutes or after 300 seconds, right, the switch will not be having any entry. Okay. It means the switch will flush the MAC address table after 300 seconds. Okay. So, Let's assume now uh, they don't have the information, but they have the IP address, fine. Now this user want to do a communication to this user, right? So this will try to do a ping, let's say. I will try to send a ping from here. Even ping we will discuss guys. In future we'll discuss the ping, what is the mechanism of ping and how many ways we have to do use the ping, right? So this user will create a packet that use ICMP, ping use ICMP, okay. At the layer three, it will add its own IP address, 10.0.0.1. At the layer two, it uh, sorry, at the, in the destination IP address, it will add 10003. Okay, now the MAC address, the, the layer two, right? This user says, my MAC address is A. This user will verify, do I have the MAC address entry of this user or no, right? It will say, no, I don't have the entry, right? So what it will do basically, it will put the packet on hold this user will put the packet, this packet on hold, and then it will originate a ARP request. ARP request. Okay, because right now this user does not have the information, right? This user does not have any idea what is the MAC address of 10002. So this packet will be on hold. And while this packet is on hold, right? In between, this user will send a ARP request to get the MAC address of 10002. It means it will contain the information like 
what is my ip address source ip address center ip address 10001 what is my mac address center mac, source mac address a center mac address basically right now what is target ip address 10.0.0.2 now what mac address i can put in the target mac it will be 000 0, 0, 0 colon 0 colon 0, 0 something it is like uh, 4 times 0 so exactly it will be having 1234.1234.1234 it will be like this okay reason being i don't really know what is the mac address of the user i want to where i want to get the mac address right and at the layer 2 this was the request arp request at the layer 2 it will add source mac address a and destination all f because in this condition what will happen here the layer 2 mac address will be forwarded or we can say who will verify only this layer two, only the switches. So switches will verify this layer two Mac address to do the forwarding, right? And the rest users, the rest users will be getting this information and will say, okay, fine. This will say, yes, this is my IP address, but this is a wrong Mac address. So I will do one thing. This is like a fill in the blanks, right? It means there's nothing zero, zero, zero is nothing, right? It means I have to fill my MAC address over here and, and I have to reply. So whenever this user will get the packet over here, right? And in between the switch is learning the MAC address. It means it is trying to maintain port number one is having a all F reply, uh, send the packet out here. This will say, okay, I'm getting a packet at layer two. Yes, I can receive. It will open the ARP request. It will say, okay, yes, the IP address is my IP address, but this is a fill in the blanks kind of thing, right? It is none. Okay. So it will do a reply with ARP reply it will send 10.0.0.2 is the center IP address. Center MAC address is B, right? Set target IP address is 10.0.0.1. Target MAC is A, right? And then at the layer two now, it will put its own MAC address and it knows about the destination MAC address A and it will send the packet out. So whenever the switch will get the packet, it will say, oh, fine. The source MAC address is B. So I will learn this information, right? What is destination A? That is, yes, I'm having the information at the port number one. So I will move the packet out over here. And this user will say, oh, I'm getting information now. Fine. So now what it will do, it will put the entry over here. But the thing here is whenever a packet goes on hold, right? That packet will be discarded. Okay. This user, this user will discard this packet and will create a new packet with this information and with B also. And then it will send the packet out here. This will say, yes, I do have the entries. I can do the forwarding. It will send the packet out here. It will reply and it will like this. Okay. So after this mechanism, we can say there will be a successful communication. So whenever we do a ping, the very first packet gets dropped, right? Just because of this ARP request and ARP reply and that packet goes on hold. That's why. Okay. It is clear. If it is clear, I'll move to next step. But just before that part, tell me yes. any questions. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Hello, Nidija. It's clear for to us. But, and I want a suggestion to ask uh, if you are giving to the, any online practical, the Cisco packet tracer, so it will be clear to all of us. Uh, yes, how to comment the it will be uh, happen. Uh, Ravi, I'm trying to explain the theory first and then I'll move to practical. So I'll show you all these packets. Don't worry. I'll explain everything from scratch. Okay. Everything. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, now the next thing. If this is clear, the same diagram I will take. A switch we Hello? have. Uh, yes. Yeah. So, what about the op table that the, the switch will maintain? Switch will maintain the MAC address table. So, you are asking what about the MAC address table? So, um, no, I'm saying about all table that switch switch maintains. Uh, switch maintains There's another table. table. No, no, switch Mac, Mac table, yeah. Only Mac table? Yes, only Mac table, right. Okay. Hello. Uh, Hi, Neeraj. Hello. Mm -hmm. Yes, you yeah, can. So I was trying to say, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, so G uh, is X. Right. Your voice is breaking, too much breaking, Nasir. We can't hear you. Okay, I'm moving to the next question. 
uh yes vishal mac address table and cam table yeah this name is same yeah the name is different but the information is same inside it right that's that's the same mac address table okay now hello so, is it is it fine now hello yes nasir i can hear you yeah mm -hmm. you can ask your questions if you have Uh, uh, this is Bimal. I uh, just want to confirm uh, in this uh, structure uh, when we have the uh, computer A and B, so uh, it will it will learn the uh, the uh, the switch will learn the uh, MAC address first, or uh, the DHCP will kick in first. Um. Okay. Look here. When we say when we compare these two things, the MAC address learning mechanism or a DHCP mechanism, even in the case of DHCP, let's say. This user want to get the IP address. Okay. This user want to get the IP address. Even at that time, there will initiate a DHCP discover packet. So whenever the switch will get the discover packet, it will learn the source MAC address. So we can, we cannot compare, we cannot do a comparison here because both are a different terminology here. Okay. Right. So, uh, this thing will kick in first as soon as we connect a PC to the new switch. Okay. Whenever we connect a PC to a switch, initially, if that's a windows machine, right. Or any Mac machine that actively try to get the Mac, try to get the IP address via DHCP, right. So they will send a DHCP discover packet. So it will initiate the packet. And at the same time, whenever a switch gets a packet, it will basically learn the Mac address at the same time. Okay. So we can say so, uh, the DHCP is more of a, uh, and endpoint thing and uh endpoint the thing. Yeah. Mac is for the switch for the switch is right exactly correct hello uh neeraj uh, can you hear me now yeah i can hear you yeah yeah so i was trying to ask uh if gratuitous arp is actually used to resolve the ip conflict yeah mm -hmm. so there is one more arp uh arp probe so uh when will our probe be actually invoked uh uh, just we'll after discuss, uh, don't worry we'll discuss one by one the thing these things right let i'm just trying to explain uh the ba very basic things that we can, everyone can un understand okay so if you have such questions we will take these questions definitely just make them notes right so we can discuss later no worries okay yeah sure perfect yeah. thank you great okay so now we are assuming the switch has the information mac address a mac address b right these users are also having the information about its own information a about the neighbor information also 10002 and the MAC address is B. Same this user is having the information. Okay, A and 10.0.0.2 is B. Now, whenever we talk about a device or user, uh, a layer three device, a PC or a router that maintains a ARP table. ARP table for four hours actually. And this switch is maintaining this MAC address table for next only 300 seconds. Now let's assume this user is trying to do a ping reachability check to this user or sending some files. This will send a packet after 10 minutes. Let's say I'm doing a ping only, right? I'm sending a ping packet with source MAC address A, destination MAC address is B because I do have the information. IP address, okay, it will start building from up uh, layer seven, layer, above layer to lower layers, not like this. Okay, it is like, it will add ICMP initially. It will add the layer three source IP is 10.01 destination is 10.02 source Mac is a destination is B. Now the packet is complete packet, right? And it will move the packet out to the switch. Now, whenever switch will get the packet, let's say after 300 seconds, it will be flushed. These two entries will be flushed out right now. What it will do switch will say, I'm getting a packet. First of all, what is my real task? Mac is learning. I will learn the Mac is over here. Cool. So you will say destination is a unicast destination and I don't have really, I don't have any entry for the B. So what it will do in this condition, it will say, I'm getting a packet. That's a unicast packet. Okay. That Mac address is unknown for me. I don't have the Mac address. Unknown. What it will do, it will flood the packet out to all the interfaces, all the active interfaces. It will flood. Okay. So this concept is called as unknown unicast flooding. Okay. So whenever a switch gets a packet and that's a unicast packet, but the switch does not have any idea about the destination MAC address, right? That's that is unknown for this uh, switch, right? 
So for that packet, the switch will do a flooding and that concept is called as unknown unicast flooding. Okay. So if a switch has MAC address lower, uh, timer lower, and the users are having the four hours, in that case, after every five minutes, we will have a flooding in the network. Okay. And we have to prevent this flooding. So to prevent this flooding, what we do, we increase the timer from 300 seconds to four hours. So we should not have any kind of flooding after exactly five minutes for all the users given, right? Because if let's say we have 10,000 users in the domain and after five minutes, if they will do the communication, right? So what will happen over there? There will be a 10,000 flooding in the domain, right? After every five minutes, even if they are not doing any communication, right? So that concept is called as unknown unicast flooding. Okay. Is that clear to everyone? Yes, we understand. Cool. Now, what I, here, I will try to explain these things in the lab. Okay, I will use GNS3. Okay, and we'll try to show you these packets, all of these packets. Okay, and uh, what I'll do so, initial packets will be there. Mm, I will try to show you GRP information. I will try to show you ARP request and reply. These two things I'll try to show you. Okay. And I will try to show you uh, this. I can't show you because I can't show you this part. Okay. It's too cold in my city and we are not having heaters. So, sir, uh, am I audible? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, sir, you just explain us. Uh, uh, our request is four hours for the layer three device. Uh, our and yeah, yeah. Our and after that, you just tell me, uh, you uh, for the prevention of flooding, we just uh, increase the app table for the five hours. Sir. Mac address table. Time. And, yeah, yeah. And and so at that time, that uh, switch is uh, used uh, at what type of uh, L2 or L3? Okay, look, look. Yeah, whenever we take a switch, as of now, we are just learning layer two switching. Okay layer two switching we are learning okay and the switch is maintaining mac address table mac address table right that maintains the mac address table for 300 seconds by default okay and a layer three device maintains rf table that maintains the rf table for next 400 seconds okay what is the difference between mac address table and rf table so basically in the mac address table it will have the entry of the information of the interface it will have the information of the vlan it will have the information of the mac address only only these things right but when we talk about the rf table in the ARP table, it will have the information of IP address, the corresponding MAC address, okay, and the interface also, like uh, which interface is best reachable via that, okay. So these are the difference between these two tables, okay. Oh, yes. Minus. Now, so uh, let me use GNS3. I will try to show you these things. Okay, so it means we have to verify two things. Here we have to verify in the packet. Uh, the very first thing, whenever I will configure IP address, right? So in that case, it will originate GR information, GR packet. The second thing I'll try to show you whenever I will do a ping, right? At the time of ping, they will basically use ARP request and ARP reply, we will see. Okay, so these two things we can verify in the packet capture also, right? And then after these things, we will move to the second mechanism forward and filter decision. Forward and filter decision. Okay, cool. Okay, before going to lab, anyone have any questions? If you have, then unmute your mic. Otherwise, just leave it. Uh, Neeraj, can I ask a question? Please. Yeah, I, I joined late. Can you please uh, explain this GR in a one or two sentences? I'm really sorry. Okay, for this. Uh, sure. Uh, GR basically whenever a user connect in the domain, any user that doesn't matter, that's a PC, that's a router, that's a firewall, that's a load, any of the layer three device, whenever any layer three device gets an IP address via any mechanism, why any mechanism, right? In that case, what happens? The user try to verify the duplicacy of our IP address, like someone is having same IP or not. If yes, I will not be using the IP address. If no, I can start using IP address. So GRP is used to verify the duplicacy of IP address in the same local domain. Okay. Yes, yeah, Salik. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Neeraj. Thank you. Uh, Salik, your questions? Hi, hi Neeraj. Actually, you uh, no, uh, asked that uh, during the four hours, there will be, uh, no, before four hours, there will be flooding. What after? Is uh, this happening the re in real time of, uh, after every four hours in switch? Mm, okay. What okay. happened? This what thing. about uh, the uh, OS level? Because it's maintaining the 
<clears throat> or a pen tree, uh, does it happen uh, after every four hours in real time? Uh, no, basically after four hours, when we say a uh, flooding kind of thing, a switch is having that information, a switch does that part. When we talk about a PC, let's say um, a user has not done any communication till another four hours. What will happen at that time? The ARP table will be flushed out, right? In that case, the user will start sending ARP request and ARP reply, right? Right. So, mm -hmm. As per the user mechanism, as per the PC mechanism, that will only use a request and reply. That's it, right? The flooding kind of thing, who is doing the flooding? The switch is doing the flooding just because mm -hmm. that is lower timer in the comparison of the PC. That's why, okay? They both have a different mechanism, okay? So uh, you are saying that uh, first, uh, my suppose my PC, uh, it, is get, it gets flushed out, yeah, right? It, yeah. Mm -hmm. When it, uh, uh, suppose I turn, uh, four hours are now uh, gone. Uh -huh. This uh, process starts again from the scratch, right? Yes. From request reply. Exactly. Correct. Right. Yeah. Uh, the okay. PC, uh, yeah. The, the PC also also mention the R entry on each system. Okay. Uh, the PC will, uh, check this R entry. The P I think the PC will also maintain the R table on each system. Yes. Right. That maintains the R. Yeah. If the, yeah. Yeah. Uh, if the PC is not getting the destination um, uh, IP uh, MAC address on his system, the PC will generate the R um, R flooding request for the switch side. Yeah. So Ravi, do not use a flooding kind of thing because when we say flooding, yeah, that's it is the resolve the that's MAC address of the destination broadcast. MAC address. Yeah. Right. Broadcast message from the PC side. Broadcast. Exactly. Right. right. Okay. And so guys, the system. Yeah. We have two things. Right. We have a term flooding. And we have a broadcast mechanism, right? Look here. In the in both cases, the answer is same. It means the packet is sent out to everyone in the both case. But when we technically, when we learn about flooding, what is a flooding kind of thing? The packet has a unicast MAC address and that is flooding out to everyone. That's a flooding basically. But if the packet is having all F, that is very, very clear that you have to broadcast, right? So when we say broadcast, the packet has a destination MAC address all F. But if the packet is trying to uh, send to everyone and if the packet does not have OLF, that is called as flooding. So they both are a different term. Output is same, but terms are different. Okay. Uh, one more question arising in my mind. Uh, you said that uh, uh, there is a unicast uh, thing uh, 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 between uh, with this, uh, suppose uh, uh, there is 300 seconds in my switch. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, suppose four hours in my OS level. Okay. Oh. Suppose 300 seconds of it is flush. What will happen at that moment? Because from my uh, system, uh, it will be a unicast. Exactly correct. Yeah. That, that's the concept is basically unknown unicast flooding. So whenever a switch, okay. the packet, that's a unicast packet, but the switch does not have that entry in the table. Right. So that will flood the packet out to everyone. That concept is called as unknown unicast flooding. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Okay, great. And uh, is it uh, okay? I got a question again. Uh, it is possible to send ARP reply to host in network without getting any ARP request from any host? Uh, no, basically. When we get an ARP request, then we reply. Otherwise, we don't know like who is asking for my MAC address, right? So until unless I don't have any MAC, any request, I will never send any reply. Okay. Now, uh, one more question I got, um, please explain what is layer two, layer three devices. Uh, okay. I'll try to explain this part. Layer two device and layer three device. Look as whenever we try to consider the devices that works at the layer two, that works at the layer three, that works at the layer four, layer seven, right? What it is basically. So whenever any of the device, whenever any device, any device is forwarding or is taking decision of sending packet Sending packet behalf of MAC address or behalf of IP address. Now we have two things. One, 
a device let's say i do have a device i will not say this device what is this device okay we have a device okay now this device is getting a packet and is doing the forwarding on the behalf of the mac address now the device is basically a layer 2 device but if the same device let's say i do have another case right where a device is getting a packet and is doing the forwarding on the behalf of ip address at that time i will say that is a layer 3 device okay so mac addresses we use at the layer 2 right layer 2 is basically your data link layer right so whenever any of the device uses the layer 2 to do the forwarding we say that's a layer 2 device and whenever any of the device use ip address information to do the forwarding basically right that's a layer 3 device okay i hope this answers your question anjali right okay cool now okay let's start gns3 now and guys this is very men like a very good question here because when we say let's say uh, if i'll just talk about a layer 2 switch right a switch is getting a packet that is doing the forwarding that's a pure layer 2 device fine when we talk about a router router has a mechanism first of all it will check layer 2 it will check it only i can receive or not right and then it will verify the layer 3 to do the forwarding it means router is verifying the mac address to receive the packet but is checking ip address to do the forwarding but a switch is actually verifying or we can say is using mac address to do the forwarding both are having a different concept okay both are having a different concept okay hi neeraj hi hello yeah hello. i actually have doubt uh... Uh, as of now, in the, using that uh, multi-layer switches, uh -huh. it is capable to use like a route, routing function L3 and also L2. Uh -huh. So what is different between the L2 and multi-layer switch? Okay. Like, that is uh, uh, I'll do one thing. Uh, we have this intervillian routing in future, right? So just make some notes about this part also. Just uh, note down this part, right? And once I'll start the layer 3 routing, I'll discuss that part, okay? Yeah, Actually, I'll discuss that part. Short, short description, like uh, this is the main difference, like uh, one or two uh, points. Like, I want to know that. Uh, sorry, and L2 and multi layer, just that's it. We'll discuss, uh, guys. We will discuss, <laughs> note down, right? And in future, once I start the interval and routing, <laughs> don't worry, sure, okay. Cool. Okay, so like, uh, sir, we have thought about these acronyms like GPL, GP. If you discuss these things, it will be good for us. Um, about what? These acronyms, these abstracts of like GP. Um, can you just type in the chat box? I I think this is very new to me also. Can you type in the chat box? Uh, say so I really do not have what this is abstract uh, kind of thing, right? I think we don't have IPGP. No, I, um, we will not discuss these things here. Okay. Yeah, that is that is very different topic from the switching part. Okay. So I will use two routers and I'll use in between a switch. So let me capture this link and we'll try to, first of all, I will configure, I will try to configure IP address over here. Okay. And then we'll see like, uh, there are any few packets or not, right? Just like your GR packet.
So I'm just trying to configure IP address. Okay. Interface at zero by zero IP address 10001 zero 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 zero, And then I will say no shutdown. So whenever you configure any address, it will start sending a GR, right? So it, it will be active with IP address. Enter. Once I'll say enter, I can go to Wireshark. If you see, Gracious RP is sending. Now let me open this packet and verify like the things we have discussed. The same thing here we have or not, right? Let me open this packet. Now, if you see here in this packet, um, one minute. Yeah. So initially in the GR in this one, right? If you see sender MAC address is my MAC address, right? Sender IP address, if you see here is 10.0.0.1, right? Now, if you see target IP address, that is exactly same IP address, right? The one we have discussed, correct? Now, what is the next thing here? If you see target MAC address, exactly same we have discussed because what we want here, the switches, whenever the switches will get the packet that will verify only layer two information, this information only, the layer two MAC address, right? They will learn source MAC address and then they will verify what is destination that is OLAP. So send the packet out to everyone. Fine. Now, whenever all the users will get the packet, they, they will say, yes, we can receive it at the layer two. Remove layer two. Then they will verify the inside information. Do I have, okay. Can I get the packet over here? Yes, I can get the packet over here. Fine. Because that's a universal broadcast MAC address, right? Do I have this IP address? No, I don't have this IP address. So please drop the packet. That's it. Okay. So this was the very first packet, the GR packet, right? Now let me try to use another user. We'll try to configure IP address over here. Interface F0 by 0. IP address 10 0 0 0 0 0. Once I'll say no shutdown. Again, what will happen here? Once I'll say no shutdown, it will start sending a GR request and I can see here because that's a broadcast information, right? Where it is? Uh, you can capture that link also. The wires are. Oh, no, no, no. Because look here, that, that will be a broadcast packet. So I should get the packet over here. By mistake, what we have done, we have configured F0 by 0. It is having F1 by 0. Okay. F0, okay. F1 by 0. IP address 10.0.0.2.255.0.0.0. And then say no shutdown. You see, just exactly after no shutdown, it is sending a GR packet and that, that has the same information. If I open this packet, right? If you see exactly same information, destination is all left, source is my MAC address, and then they have this information, right? Correct? Now, the very first thing, the GR mechanism is clear, right? Now I'll move to second step. That is a ping. I will try to do a ping to show IP arc. As of now, I really don't know about 1002, right? Same here, do show IP arc. Even this user does not have any idea what is 1001. I will try to do a ping now. Do ping 10.0.0.2. Okay. Once I'll press enter here, right? What will happen here? This will try to verify do I have the MAC address? or not. It will not find the MAC address. So it will put the packet on hold and will send a ARP request. Enter. Look at the first packet is dropped and then we have success packet right. Let me go to the packet capture. Now, if you see, let me raise the previous things. Guys, please be on mute if you don't have any questions, please. Now, so if you see this one, the very first packet we have here is ARP request, right? Let me open this packet. Now, if you see at the layer two, that is fine. Exactly as we have discussed, right? Source MAC address, destination is OLAP because the switches want to send the packet out to everyone. That's why here we have OLAP. Fine. Now come here. Sender IP is my IP address. Sender MAC is my MAC address. Sender target IP, that user I want to know, right? Now, if you see target MAC address, that is 0, 0, 0, 0 everywhere. It means whenever the user will get it, that will say, yes, this is my IP address, but I have to put here my own MAC address, my real MAC address, right? So it will send a reply and the reply will always be a unicast. Okay. If you see this packet completely, it is completely destination source, destination source, everywhere we have the unicast MAC addresses, right? So the reply is unicast, the request is broadcast. And then exactly after getting the reply, the next packet, one, two, three, and four, you see, 
the first packet was dropped just because of the request reply, right? And now the next packets we can see here. So this is the mechanism, or we can say the very first part we have written the switch functions. Okay. Any questions? Any doubt till this point? Anyone? Yes. Aniraj. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, I have a question. Please, please ask your question. What yeah. is ARPA? As I see in the R table, there was an ARPA. That's a protocol basically for this one. Okay. That's an ARPA type. Basically, it's a type of the um, R table that maintains ARPA. That's it. Mm -hmm. Nothing else it has. Okay. Uh, ARPA okay. is uh, there are three protocol or layer two? When we say ARP, look here, when we talk about the that belongs to layer two, layer three, right? What it is basically, look here. Um, as of now, if you see the packet, let me go to the packet directly. Okay, I'll try to explain the part here. If you see this packet, right? This packet has the information of the layer two, right? It does a, it, it has a layer two header only, it does not have the layer three, but above layer two, the packet that is containing that has an information about the IP and the Mac also. So uh, we try to call it layer 2.5 protocol. This is not a la pure layer three protocol. Okay. This, that's a layer 2.5 protocol because it contains this ARP request contains your IP address and the Mac address, but it does not have the IP header. So we cannot say that's a layer three. Okay. So that's a layer 2.5 protocol. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, one more question I can see. ARP spoofing. So, uh, Salim, we can't discuss that part here as ARP spoofing kind of thing here, right? Because that, that is very big thing as of now, right? Uh, packet flow. So, we shall we just did the packet flow mechanism, right? So, here we have done a packet flow mechanism, right? In the layer two network, whenever uh, we have the layer two network, how this user will do a communication to this user. The first packet was a GRP, then ARP request reply, and then ping packet. This was the complete mechanism, basically. We actually did it, right? Okay. Uh, guys, any questions before moving to next step? Anyone? Uh, yes, Nairaj. Yes. Uh, how many uh, MAC address can learn switch at a time? At a time. Okay. When we talk about this term, right, this question. So we can say a interface, a single interface can have multiple MAC addresses. Okay. Um, and multiple interface cannot have same MAC address. So I'll just try to um, note down this line. A switch can learn multiple MAC address on a same interface, but cannot learn same MAC address on multiple interfaces. Okay. If you can read this one, I'll try to increase the number. I think we can't increase. Can you read this one? Right? Yes. Uh, yes. Can learn multiple MAC address on the same interface, but cannot learn the same MAC address on multiple interfaces. Even this part we'll discuss in the, uh, the last mechanism, the looping part. Okay. That time I'll discuss more about this information. Okay. So uh, for your question, the answer is yes. It can learn multiple MAC addresses depend on the switch capability, what it has. Okay. Every switch has a different mechanism, or we can say a different capacity to learn the MAC addresses. So this concept is basically depend on the capacity, what capacity it has. Okay. 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 okay cool. Now let's talk about the next step. The second step is your forward filter decision. Okay. So when we say, okay, the very first task was for a switch that was a Mac address learning. The next is your forward filter decision. Now what is forward filter decision? So um, in future, as we know, yeah, we will discuss the VLAN ID kind of thing. What is the VLAN information? So uh, as of now, if I try to explain the VLAN for, for just to explain this part, right? 
villain is kind of a thing that we use to break the multiple interfaces into a different different broadcast domain let's assume we have a switch that has 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 interfaces let's assume okay and uh, we have five users from the hr department we have five users from the sales department okay and all are connected here let's say these five interfaces are having the hr connectivity and these five interfaces are having the sales connectivity but what will happen here whenever let's say this user will be sending any our request as that is that is broadcast right so by default we know every single interface of the switch will be the part of the vlan one kind of domain right so what happens at that time whenever any of the user from the hr department will do a broadcast sales can receive it even whenever the sales will do a broadcast hr can receive it right so i want to limit this broadcast it means i want to break the broadcast domain it means what i want here whenever a hr user will do a broadcast that remains only in the interfaces that are connected to the hr department and same for the sales so what we can do in this case if we have two departments right and want to do want to have two different broadcast domain so what we can do basically here we can use a vlan to also to break the broadcast domain so i will use this interface in the vlan one how to use it we'll discuss in the vlan part definitely and same these five interface into the vlan too so how to configure vlans how to assign the vlans to the interface and how we can have this mechanism we'll discuss in the vlan part right as of now just a mechanism to understand to make you understand about this part only okay so now let's assume we have a switch where we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 these are not 10 interfaces these are let's say uh, 20 interfaces let's assume right so few belongs to vlan 10 few belongs to vlan 20 few belongs to vlan 30 few belongs to vlan 40 and few belongs to vlan 50 let's assume okay now it means this switch has the information about the vlan 10 vlan 20 vlan 30 vlan 40 and vlan 50 it means whenever the users will try to do the communication they will have the mac address table including 10 20 30 40 50 right or wrong correct guys the switch will have the mac address table including all these vlan information right so now whenever any of the switch comes here now we are discussing two points two use cases and then you will tell me which one is the best one right in the very very first use cases a user a user is coming here this user is coming here right and that belongs to vlan 30 let's assume okay so the user want to do a communication to a user that is in the vlan 30 only now the switch get the packet switch says the very first entry i do have for the vlan 10 and we have 10 entries here we have 20 entries here we have uh, 10 entries here we have 30 entries here we have 40 entries here let's assume in that case switch will, will be go one by one okay one by one one by one and exactly after checking 30 or 40 entries it finds oh fine that is reachable via interface number 5 just do the communication that was a very first case in the second case what the device is doing what the switch is doing here the switch is saying tell me first of all one thing in on in which vlan i'm getting the packet the switch says i'm getting the packet in the vlan 30 so just do one thing filter all the vlans filter all the vlans and just verify the packet in the vlan 30 only it means it will just verify the 10 information 10 entries in the earlier case in the very first use cases it was trying to verify every single entry and then it will find the answer but in this case it is trying to verify only 10 entries right so which one is better one this one is a better one right so here it will quickly get the information right correct guys so this is your forward filter decision it means before doing the forwarding let's say switch gets a packet so before doing the forwarding what it will do it will do a filtering of the vlans and then will verify okay i was getting a packet in the vlan 30 so i will just do the filtering or i will just verifying the information in the same vlan i will not verify other vlans so this concept is called as forward filter decision so it will take a decision before doing the forwarding okay i'm sure this is clear to everyone the second function of a switch so whenever yes, in whenever someone ask tell me about the three function of a switch right these are the basically three functions of a switch initially are the basic functions basically okay so the very first function was a mac address learning that we have done the second function was forward filter decision that we have done definitely 
third function is a different one i'll talk about before that i'll take your doubts any questions any doubts guys anju bhai so will broadcast for every vlan um so vishnu this is a broadcast for every vlan um yeah whenever the switch will receive a packet or broadcast packet in the same vlan it will do the broadcast in the same vlan only not to all the vlans okay the packet received in a single vlan will be remains in the single vlan not to other vlans that can be unicast that can be broadcast that can be a flooding that doesn't matter so the packet of a vlan 10 will be here in the vlan 10 only if that's a broadcast it will do broadcast in the same vlan okay any other questions guys anyone yes alif any question uh, i guess uh, there should be a, a bit a little bit about uh, the vlans uh, although you, uh, a little bit a little bit okay um i think uh, this was the okay i'll try to explain because we have few more things to discuss in the uh, vlan right so about the vlan is kind of by default all the all the interfaces of a switch are the part of a single vlan so by default whenever we purchase a switch right when we bring the devices up right all the interface will be the part of vlan 1 right and then further if i want to categorize the interfaces categorize the uh, the department right what i can do then i can configure multiple vlans and how many vlans i can configure that has a size that has a size of 12 bits if that is 12 bits it means i can have a range of 4096 numbers right it means i can start a value starting from 0 to 4095 okay so this much of vlans i can configure on a switch and can categorize the interfaces right now you will ask we cannot have on a single switch we cannot have 4095 interfaces so why we have that such vlan those questions i'll answer in the vlan part okay so uh, as of now i think this is enough to understand this concept right yeah. uh, neeraj i have a question yeah please Uh, could you please differentiate between broadcast and collision domain broadcast and collision domain okay i will try to explain okay any other questions as of now only i have only one question okay well, you are trying to ask something if you have any questions you can ask please okay lalit any questions from your side sorry it did by mistake please continue okay sure Okay, so now let us just have a discussion on the broadcast and the collision domain, and then we can go further. Broadcast domain. So when we say broadcast domain, right? Uh, so I'll just try to note down few things here. Whenever a user send a packet as destination broadcast now the switches will flood the packet or we can say how far the switches will flood the packet to the devices or we can say in a domain so if switch if that switch if that packet covers 10 devices in a domain that is called as single broadcast domain it means i'll try to explain the topology let's say i do have a switch here i do have a switch over here i do have a switch over here and i do have a switch over here okay and we have a user connected here okay and uh, it is like this and one more switch over here and one router here we have let's assume and few switches are here one more switch is is here right one more switch is here right now let's say this user will send a broadcast packet at the layer 2 that is olf so this user will send the broadcast here that's a switch switch will say if that's a layer 2 broadcast i will send the packet out to everyone it will send the packet out here it will verify before doing the forwarding it will do the filtering decision it will verify 
how many vlans i do have let's assume that is single vlan all these interface are the part of the same vlan it will move the packet out here this which will say all these ports are the part of the same vlan vlan 1 vlan 1 vlan 1 i will broadcast the packet out here and out here also this doesn't have any interface fine this which will receive the packet that says this interface is a part of vlan 1 but this interface is a part of vlan 2 so the the broadcast received on the single vlan cannot bypass to other vlan so that packet will be stopped here so we can say this is a single broadcast only okay how far that packet is going how far that packet can travel in the domain or we can say how many packets how many switches it will cover right so that's a part of single vlan single broadcast domain okay and for every vlan we have a single broadcast domain if let's say on a single switch we have 10 vlans we can say on this switch we have 10 different broadcast domain okay is that clear about the broadcast domain yes okay now what is collision domain what is collision domain let's say i'll just talk about a hub okay i'll talk about a hub hub claims a single collision domain reason being what happens actually let's say i do have another hub here i do have another hub here and i do have one more hub here right so whenever hub gets a packet the hub does not have any idea which one is rx and which one is tx now guys if you don't have this idea what what is rx and tx so mm. you have to learn about this part right because now oh, we are i know you about it yeah because we are going to a different part now so i will not go in, inside that part okay so the okay, hub no doesn't have any idea which pin it will treat as a receive which pin it will treat as a tx transmit right it mean Now we can say it has eight pins in a single wire. It has eight pins, right? So hub really does not have any idea, right? Which pin I have to use for the receive and which pin I have to use for the transmit the packet, right? But the switch has the idea, right? It says I know which pins I'll be using as a TX, which pin I'll be using as a RX, right? To receive the packet, to transmit the packet. So hub, whenever we send a packet out here, by default that goes to everyone, and at that time we cannot send any single packet from any other user. If any other user will try to send the packet out over there. there will be a collision and collision affect all the hub interfaces all the hub interfaces okay so that is a collision domain it means how far that collision is affecting the domain so if a collision is here this hub will say the collision affects this interface so this interface will be affected this hub says oh that interface is affected so this interface will be affected this will say oh that interface is affected so this will be affected it means how far that collision affecting the domain that's a single collision domain So hub says a single collision domain, and switch says per port collision domain. If something happens here, that collision remains here. That will never disturb these two links. Reason being, uh, this has a receive and transmit mechanism active, right? So, so switch says per port collision domain. Hub says single collision domain. Okay, that is clear. Got it. Got it. Right. Now the next thing. the third function of a switch loop prevention so loop prevention is done by spanning tree so whenever we purchase a switch by default spanning tree is there it, but, uh, yes kumar any questions from your side yeah nirish uh, for this uh, packet tracer right so that is uh, can you explain once more uh, if you get chance uh, cisco packet tracer you are asking uh i uh, know uh, this um why shock why shock the traffic is going yep um last thing about gns3 i think okay uh, so kumar i will take this question later right because uh, i'll try to explain because whenever we do this uh, task right so every time i'll try to open the why shock and uh, we'll be learning one by one these, these things right how to verify the sure. packet okay. okay. how to okay. verify thank you, you. yeah sure we will be doing one by one yeah okay now when we say the loop prevention right loop prevention is basically whenever switch does these things the switch also needs a loop prevention mechanism because uh, the switch says we can do a broadcast because that's a real function of a switch right so whenever switch says we can do the broadcast so there should be mechanism that the the loop should not be there because if i do have three switches connected in the in this kind of topology so they might have a loop the broadcast let's say send here that will be sent out here that will be sent out here and that will keep moving but by default all the switches has the spanning tree stp 
spanning tree to prevent the loop okay so about spanning tree how the spanning tree works how the spanning tree prevent the loop that we will discuss in the spanning tree mechanism only right now what we will discuss how the switches how the switches detect there is a loop because whenever i will say the packet is looping the packet is not looping actually the span the switches says the destination was broadcast so that is our task i have to do a broadcast the switch says that was a broadcast i have to do a broadcast this switch says that's a broadcast i have to do a broadcast so that's not a looping basically right whenever a switch gets a packet as a broadcast packet the working of a switch is that if they receive a broadcast they have to broadcast right so they are doing their own task basically that's not that's not a looping they are doing their own task but how the switch will get to know we are circulating the same packet again and again that we have to understand okay so the question here is we have to understand this how the switch will get to know we are circulating a same packet continuously right so i'll try to explain again we have a switch here we have another switch here we have one more switch here they are connected like this let's assume guys again the question here is how the switches will get to know we are circulating the same packet okay switch user user only this user or let me remove this two okay so let's say this user is sending some packets that's a port number 1 that's a port number 2 port number 3 port number 1 port number 2 1 and 2 okay switch switch 1 switch number 2 switch number 3 okay so this user is sending a packet with the destination mac source mac address is a destination is olf whenever the switch number 1 will get the packet that will try to maintain the mac address table how that will maintain that says i'm getting a packet with the source mac address a so i will learn the mac address on the port number 1 with mac address a with a vlan id 1 something like that right so let's assume we are using vlan 1 only so we'll not consider that part now okay it will say okay fine it will say okay destination is olf so i have to send the packet out over here and over here also cool no worries switch number 2 will say i'm getting a packet on port number 1 with source mac address a even switch c will switch 3 will say i'm getting a packet on port number 1 with mac address a cool they both will say what is destination destination is olf so please send the packet out here and you also please send the packet out here whenever switch number 3 will get the packet here that will say i'm getting a packet on the port number 2 with mac address a and what is the switch mechanism the switch cannot learn same mac address on multiple ports so it will flush from here and we'll learn on the port number 2 same while getting the packet over here that will say i'm getting a packet now on the port number 2 the same mac is a so i have to re remove the previous one now the next thing the packet received on this interface will be sent out to this interface switch one will say oh i'm getting a packet again on port number 2 with the mac address a i have to flush from here the packet received on this interface was will be sent out to this interface now right one will again say oh again i'm getting a packet with same mac address on other port i have to remove from here now right okay guys i got a question to repeat this again i'll repeat it no worries guys first of all the question should be clear what the question we are learning okay the question here is how the switches will get to know there is a loop or we are circulating the same packet again and again right that's the question basically so which switch they are connected guys if you don't have any questions please mute your mic vipin please can you please mute yeah user user the port number 1 port number 2 port number 3 port number 1 port number 2 port number vipin can you please mute Uh, sir actually i have one question sir in uh, future we uh, discuss on http deeply we will discuss yeah definitely okay okay now so uh, let's assume now in this condition this switch will maintain the mac address table this switch also maintain this switch will also maintain right this switch is saying i am getting a packet on the port number 
with source MAC address A and destination is all F. Cool. So this switch will learn the MAC address on the port number one with MAC address A. Cool. It will say, what is destination? That is destination is all F. I have to do a broadcast. I have to do a broadcast. So whenever switch number two will get the packet that says on port number one, I'm getting a packet with MAC address A. What is destination? That is all F. I will do a broadcast. At the same time, switch C is learning the packet. Three is learning the packet. On the port number one, it is getting a packet with MAC address A. Destination is all F. It will do a broadcast. So the packet received on the port on the device number two will be sent out here. And same, this packet will be sent out here because that is a broadcast packet, right? Now the, these switches will say, I'm getting a packet on port number two with MAC address A again. So please flush from here. Same switch number three will say, I'm getting a packet on the port number two with same MAC address. So please flush from here. Now the packet received on this interface and the packet received on this interface will be sent out over here and over here. Let's assume I'm getting the packet over here first of all, right? This switch will say, now I'm getting the same MAC address on other ports. So I will flush from here while getting this packet here. This will say, I'm getting the packet here. Please flush from here. So the packet that was received on this interface will be sent out here and the packet was received on this interface will be sent out here also, right? So two will again learn on the port number one, three will learn again on the port number one. So it will flush from here. We'll learn on the new port and it will keep doing the same task again. Now flush from here, a, a kind of this task, right? What they're doing basically now, the switches are flapping Mac address table, right? So whenever a switch detect that we are flapping the MAC address one by one from the ports, right? It means we are circulating the same packet and then they get to know there is a loop. Okay. This is how the switches get to know there is a loop. Okay, guys. So whenever switches detect, there is a MAC address flapping, right? So they get to know there is a loop reason being why they're doing the MAC address flapping reason being the switches cannot learn the same Mac on multiple ports. Okay. The same Mac address cannot be learned on the multiple ports. That's why. So guys, if you have any questions, please ask. So from my side, I have, I'm done, right? So the switch basic function we have done today, right? In one and a half hour, right? So the first one was Mac address learning. The second was your uh, forward filter disease. And the third is your loop prevention, right? So uh, about this uh, Mac address flapping basically, right? So these things we have done. If you guys have any questions, yeah, we can take it now. Anyone? Anyone, any questions guys? All good? Uh, uh, yes, we shall. Hello? Yeah, I, I can hear you. Uh, sir, uh, how can I uh, uh, prevent this uh, loop? Uh, and what is the you know, uh, resolution for this loop prevent then? SPP we will be using. Or uh, in future we'll discuss parentry in the detail. Don't worry. Okay, that's okay. a topic we have to discuss. Sir. Hello. Uh, yes, Vishal. Sir, I have one doubt. If uh, switches uh, are doing this type of thing continuously. Then at the uh, at the time they have a lots of uh, uh, full they, they have the full of RAM exactly something uh, so if, uh, yeah, uh, yeah exactly if we disable spanning tree what will happen here the CPU utilization will be there and even you will not be able to access switches they will be very slow okay if they have done. yeah so uh, what what uh, we are doing for uh, prevent from them is just yeah, so STP uh, you are using or something else. Okay, so basically we have to use spanning tree to prevent the loop. If we have a loop, right, the device will be very slow. The CPU relation will, will be very high. Even you can't configure, you cannot enter A, B, C, anything you cannot enter. That much condition it will be having at that time if there is a loop, okay? Because this loop, I can, I'm explaining in the detail, right? So at that time, there will be a, within milliseconds, there will be 1,000 loop, 10,000 packets will be continuously, right? So it will be a CPU hike at that time, a very, with a very high speed, right? So you have to, first of all, unplug all the uh, cables, right? To remove it and then enable spanning tree and then plug it again, okay? Okay, sir. And uh, can we just delete all the uh, all the lo loss and something else uh, from the switches? 
no basically sparring tree is a thing that we use to prevent the loop okay much more this sir actually i asked a one first uh, which feature makes a difference uh, between uh, hub and switch okay yeah the same if, if you remember uh, i was doing a discussion about the rx and tx right rx and tx when we say hub hub does not have any idea what is rx what is tx and hub does not maintain any table that does not maintain any table right but switch knows about which pin i have to use as rx which pin i have to use as a tx like receive and transmit pin for the data it knows i need to maintain a mac address table it knows the unicast are unicast the broadcast are broadcast right so the switch has multiple capacity or we can say capability to do some task it has a programming kind of thing in the background but the hub does not have anything it works at the layer one it receives the signals and flood the signals out to everyone it does not even even any idea what is mac address but the switch has the mechanism or can in, learn or can read the information actually okay and can maintain these things so that's a difference between hub and switch okay so sir the, actually this uh, program is uh, called as uh, asic in the asic we have the program yes exactly in the asic we have the program right okay 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 thank you so nira sir yes you have a question can you explain the one by one uh, uh, difference between hub and switch uh, what are the what are the reason we require the switch yeah again places we, we of hub yeah okay first of all hub does not have the multiple interface that has only few interfaces eight interfaces or less than eight interfaces right and that does not have any idea what to do it will just receive the signals 010101 01, and it flood out to everyone okay and that's why it has the collision domain also okay but the switch has a smart programming it knows about rx tx it knows about it knows about the mac address table switch knows about the unicast communication switch knows about the broadcast communication switch knows about few more things so that makes a switch actually okay yes but so sir uh, suppose that we have a two users okay. they are not um, they don't know each other okay those so, uh, in the hub okay so both are trying to send the packet okay. this send the packet at the same time okay and they try, uh, yes you can't do the communication then if they both are trying to send the packet at the same time you can't do any communication you can't do okay okay so okay. what are the mechanism to verify it is line is free for communication or not uh okay we don't have any such communication methods right because we generally do not use hub nowadays we use our switches only and when we say switches we can do the communication so uh, that concept basically we can say obsolete we can see those are obsolete now right we really do not use these things so we focus on the switches only and switches by default has this mechanism and you can do the communication at the same time right so sir can you explain your back of clock and jam pattern in That's the hub right. um so uh, mukesh i will not go inside hub now right i can share a video okay. that, that has the explanation of hub and switch okay okay it's so, about one or two hour video so that has these explanation about the devices i can share that part okay so can you explain me type of switching techniques uh layer 2 layer 3 will discuss switching techniques that's a part of router um, okay uh, the switching uh, techniques is a router uh, i mean packet switching circuit switching and uh, other, another one i am forgetting right now no more okay. case so those things will not discuss here, right I have shared a topic list to everyone, so those topics actually we will focus on. Okay. Okay. Okay, sir. Sir. Okay, guys. Anyone? Any other doubt? Sir. Yeah. Uh, in above above scenario, you have told that uh, we have to disable. We have to unplug the cable. Then uh, we have to um, enable the HTTP command, right? And uh, is uh, there? Uh, and that was example only but whenever we purchase a switch by default there is a switch enabled okay. there is a spanning tree enabled basically okay we uh, no need to enable the uh, http command manually no that's a default mechanism the switches okay 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 that's the default one. so so what will be the class time in, uh, will it be tomorrow or like next wednesday oh tomorrow yeah we will have the classes from monday to thursday 
four days a week we will have the class yeah okay so nirish sir i have a last question so suppose that we have a multiple switches mm -hmm. okay um, so, and they are having a loop okay so how can verify where is exactly happening um no when we say hub right first of all we do not use hub but in the hub no, i am talking about switch okay yeah using mac address flapping basically we can get to know there is a loop or whenever there is a loop in the physical device you can see all the lights will be blinking all the interface lights will be blinking at the same time okay that means there is a loop okay okay sir nirish sir uh, can you explain the loop how it is happening in the genesis 3 like uh, creating the packets and uh, how okay. we can find out the loop and uh, and how we prevent okay in the virtualization we can't do this part reason being when we start doing this mechanism so the switches will be like uh, they will be hang right and we cannot even access because that's a virtual environment right and the switches will be down at that time so even we cannot disable spanning tree at that time if we disable it the device will be down okay because that's a virtual environment and uh, we can't do this in the virtual environment we can't do basically okay so in the physical environment we can do right um, so in the physical we can try yes but at the same time we have to very frequently verify those things otherwise i will not be able to even access the switch at that time okay okay so is there any commands to prevent before uh, getting loop before getting loop before getting loop no there is nothing like that okay but yeah we is if you are commands ever, like you can check your uh, mac address table if that is flapping if that is flapping there is a loop basically okay okay yeah you will you will see like uh, the same mac address is running on the port number 1 then port number 2 then port number 1 2 1 2 like that if there is a loop then and you can unplug the cables from those ports okay the so can't we simply enable the stp in order to prevent the loops yeah but uh, but like uh, even while having spanning tree sometimes we can get a scenario where we have the loop then even while having spanning tree okay so those scenarios will discuss in spanning tree okay yeah uh, yes sir uh, spanning tree is uh, next uh, next topic and uh, this is only the topic of uh, no 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 spanning uh, okay we will discuss first of all vlans vtp dtp and then we have the spanning tree in future we'll discuss spanning tree Okay, okay. In the deep, we can discuss it. Right? We will try to discuss in deep, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions, guys? Anyone? So, okay, uh, sir, can you to? We are going to discuss about to ARP in deep. ARP. Uh, yes. you can bring your questions i'll try to explain but we will not um, we will not like touch the arp concept right so sir uh, i have a doubt uh, regarding simple arp and reverse arp okay uh, can you do it Dif uh, differentiate between simple arp and reverse arp yeah in few words if i'll explain simple arp is your basically when we do a arp request to get the mac address reverse arp is like i do have the mac address i want to know about the ip address because what happens actually whenever we have the dhcp in the mechanism in the uh, dhcp in the network right at that time the users or let's say i do have a specific server i do have a specific server but that even has a dynamic ip a dhcp ip right so at that time what will happen here whenever the users will try to get the information or whenever the server will try to get the information of the users even at that time right so we know the mac address will be always same the mac address cannot be different right or cannot be changed so at that time basically using mac address i want to find ip address that's a reverse arp basically okay okay got it so sometimes we have to actually find out the ip address and in that case that concept is called as reverse arp okay sir any other questions guys anyone I think uh, okay. So I, is the timing going to remain the same uh, for timing, all of the four days a week? Yes, timing will be same. Yes. 
So actually, most of the students were asking for the shift in the timings. Uh, Is it comfortable for I, you? I have free timings at only this time, so that's why we are considering these free sessions, right? So I don't have other timings. Uh, I do have other sessions also, so I can't make it actually. That's why. Okay. Oh, thank you. Actually, I have these free timings only. That's why we are considering these sessions. Otherwise, even we could not have it, right? That's why. Sir, hello, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Sir, how many uh, days do I you want... take the uh, entire train? Sorry. How hello, many sir. Will... Sir, my question, question are also same. How many uh, days? Guys, it will about, take to come I'm not sure about the days, but the topics we have shared that we will discuss actually. It might take 10 days, might take 20 days. I'm not sure, right? So we will discuss the topics actually. We'll focus on the topics, not on the days. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Oh, okay, sir. Uh, okay, okay. Sir, every time you Thank send you, uh, me link. Hello. Link will be same. Yes. Uh, link will be same. Uh, sir, right. every time you send mail or same link in for all classes. Same link for the same all the classes. So I save the mail, okay? Uh, uh, have, have you shared any PDF or something for self-study or uh no like Vishal, I don't have such kind of thing. I'll share this uh, this PDF only, the one I'm creating. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, guys, I think it is good, right? So let's wind up the call, right? Thank you, sir. Okay, guys. Good night. Thank you, sir. Good night. Thank you, sir, for the session. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir, for your session. Yes, bye. Take care.